Six out of nine generations of Pokemon have had this archetype called the Fossil Mon. Taking a page straight out of Jurassic Park, these mods are revived from prehistoric fossils to roam the modern world. Now, I'm here trying to make a collection of creatures based off of science topics, and paleontology is an exciting field of science. Thus, I'll be briefly reviewing each fossil Pokemon to catch everyone up to speed before describing the fossil mods that I've made. So let's start with the prehistoric times of the Game Boy era. From Generation 1, Pokemon decided to add a story element that would affect its archetype for the rest of the series. You encounter two different fossils, but an NPC stops you and forces you to choose one of the two. This became a main attribute for fossil mons. They are side grades of each other. Making this an option keeps the player from experiencing every mon in an isolated single playthrough. This also encourages playing the game again or asking other friends to play the other versions of the game all the while making a single playthrough feel a little more unique. So what were these mods anyways, and how are they side grades? Well, for starters, Ammonite and Kabuto are both rock water type. One's an Ammonite and the other is a Trilobite. Though it does look a lot like the modern day horseshoe crab, they got the same total base stats, they both evolve once to again share the total amount of base stats. The main difference gameplay wise is that one is a special attacker and the other one's physical, before I move on to the other regions, I do want to mention how there's a secret third fossil called Aerodactyl. Rather than reviving them from sediment, they come from an old amber, which is fossilized tree sap. Unlike the other oceanic fossil mons, this one flies and it's a reference to the pterosaur. Anyways, time to go back to the sea. Generation 2 didn't have fossils, but Game Freak decided to bring them back in Gen 3, and kind of made them a mainstay in terms of archetypes. Generation 3 is known to have an abundance of water, so it's fitting that their fossils reference oceanic animals as well, but this time they're not water type. Lilip and Anorith are grass and bug type respectively. Now, they share the same total base stats again, but you might be asking, isn't bugs super effective to grass? Well, I'm not even going to talk about how they both have rock types because especially looking at later generations, version exclusives, and other quote unquote side grades, it's important to take a step back. Just because pitting the side grace with each other looks like one is much better, there are still a lot of other factors you could design to make them each worthwhile. Lilith's evolution, Cradilly for example, is bulky and Armaldo is a heavy hitter, so I want to stamp out this notion that side grace have to be neutral to each other or that like one can't be super effective to the other, because they could all be worthwhile in their own sense. And by the way, Cradley's line is actually an animal called Crinoids. There's still Crinoids around, but despite the grass typing, it's actually an animal. Anorith and Armaldo, on the other hand, are a reference to the Animalocaris, which means abnormal shrimp, and is thought to be a top predator from back in its day, explaining the high attack stat. The Generation 4 fossil leaned into this dichotomy of offense versus defense, with Rampardos having a monstrous attack stat, and Bastiana not only having high defense stats, but also gaining the Steel type, one of the most defensive types in the game. Again, if you just look at the typings, yes, Steel beats Rock, but these two are clearly used for different cases, making it a tougher decision between choosing Diamond or Pearl. They just happen to be version exclusives this time around. Rimpardos is a Pachycephalosauria, and Bestiodon is a Ceratops. Generation 5 is kinda known to be a big reset. It's the first region placed outside of Japan, none of the old mons could be used until post-game, and many people have seen parallels between Generation 5's 156 mons and the original 151. Now, Gen 5 didn't have three fossil lines like Gen 1, but they did have another rock water fossil like Ammonite and Kabuto, and a rock flying mon like Aerodactyl. And kind of ingeniously, we're seeing a new dichotomy between the sea and the sky, Archaeops referencing the Archaeopteryx, and Caracasa referencing the Archelon. And for the third generation in a row, we're seeing the split between offense and defense. I wonder if there's any other way we can make side grades. Allow me to introduce you to the Booba Kiki effect. 
When you see a sharp shape, would you be more inclined to call it a kiki or a booba? Oddly enough, across many cultures, kiki would be more apt to describe sharp objects, while booba is more for smooth objects. That's it. But I think we could apply this distinction to designs. An easy way to distinguish between a cute cuddly design and an edgy one is to make the silhouettes round or sharp. Tyrantrum and Aurorus reference the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Amargosaurus respectively, and we actually have a tweet about how the sauropod was chosen to pair with the Tyrannosaurus, and how they picked Amargosaurus the to have a sail to distinguish Aurorus from other mons like Lapras. Now there's multiple theories behind what the Amargosaurus actually might look like. Some people suggest that there is a sail on its neck, while other people suggest that there were spines instead. But in this design with Aurorus, they chose the sail hype hypothesis, and it seems it's because that allows Aurorus to have a different texture in their silhouette compared to Tyrantrum. Now Tyrantrum has all these spikes on their heads, on their neck, got this weird beard going on, very spiky in terms of their silhouette, while Aurorus with the sail allows it to be very smooth, very round, the booba to Tyrantrum's kiki. Gen 7 had no fossils. Maybe Game Freak is petering out from making fossils, cause we didn't really get any for Gen 7 nor Generation 9. But Gen 8 kinda showed us how this concept could be expanded on. Instead of having a pair of two stage evolutions, we get to mix and match four halves of a fossil to construct a fusion of some sorts. Many have noticed how this may be a reference to the Crystal Palace dinosaurs, which displayed mismatched skeletons. What I particularly like is the Vish part in Draco and Arctovish references the Dunkleosteus, which we actually just know the head of. I don't know, I thought that was pretty cool. I don't expect to have a gimmick like this for fossils in the future, but it was definitely a way to put a spin on it. And there's other ways to put a spin on the concept too. I've seen people reference tar pits that also preserve fossils. There are mummified records in ice. And we also got that amber concept all the way back from Gen 1. Kinda wish that they call those like grass cause it's tree saps instead of rock. Anyways, that's all the fossil moths we have so far, so let me share you mine. In my science space creature collector, I also have a pair of fossil lines. I'm not sure how the mechanics is going to play out, but I can at least share the designs with you today. Now this first one was made before I even started this project, and it was back when I was just making random fake mon designs. You see, when I first heard of this animal, I wanted to make a design based off of it. The Hallucigenia is a worm-like animal from the Cambrian era with spindly legs and spiny thorn. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Pretty cool looking animal, but that's not the only takeaway here. For a long time, researchers were confused on which end was the head. Also, some publications said that it walked on the sharp spines. Truly the trippiest fossil of them all. Only in 2015 did researchers agree on which side was the real head and which side were the real legs. That's why Tripper here has a rear face forwards, and their legs also double up as spines. This trippy color scheme is actually a reference to an old Windows screensaver animation, thus it has screen cleaner for a hidden ability. I mean, if I do ever make my own game with these characters in the distant future, I'll have to rename abilities, change stats. These are just placeholders. Actually, you might have even noticed that I used the same type symbol up here as I did with my ground type mods, and that's because I'm planning on combining rock and ground type into a geo type. I'll have a video on that later. Anyways, here's the evolution, Halodrome, a geopsychic type. Instead of going super offensive or defensive, I wanted this line to be his powerful supporter, with high speed and access to a bunch of status moves like stage hazards. But yeah, the Hallucigenia is a story about how conventional publications can be wrong, but this shouldn't be an invitation for middle school level contrarians that just keep on repeating why not mindlessly. No, many publications may be wrong, but it's up to your own ability to take a step back and objectively consider evidence and find the truth rather than cherry picking to keep your opinion. I mean, the best way is trying to conduct your own research, which flat earthers do all the time and prove themselves wrong all the time. I can only hope that in the future that people's minds would be more open and empathetic to each other because then we could all be happier. 
or we could all turn into crabs. In 2020, PBS Ian showed off a viral video about how everyone is turning into crabs, spotting a meme of how even humans could become crabs one day. I mean, if we're ever going to return to the beaches, we might, but that's not what the video is about. No, it was about how a lot of sea creatures convergently evolved into shapes that we call a crab. This happened so much that we gave it a name, Carsonization. I recently made a video on convergent evolution, but the gist is that several different families of species coincidentally began to share traits and even look similar to each other. Now, I got some comments disliking how I used the term coincidence there, but here's the thing. As I also mentioned in that video, in our world, convergent evolution usually occurs so that the species does better in their environment. Thus, for a lot of sea creatures, crab shapes were more compact, allowed more mobility, thus it was better to turn into a crab, or into something that looks like a crab. I used the term coincidence to emphasize that the species didn't converge because of crossbreeding or because of some twisted Lamarckian sense where they looked at another species and forced their babies to look like- No, no none of that happened. But I'll repeat this again, that in our world, we can usually reason why these similarities occur. So, for the first stage here, this is Fisticot, based off of the Platycotta, a species around the Triassic era that had yet to become more crab-like. There are still like this weird shrimp lobster kind of thing, but they got that fighting spirit. When they evolve though, their tail gets tucked underneath and they become more propped up, so we got Anodutes, who can swing their claw fists around. And reduce their slower but more offensive than Halodrome. I don't know if I'll keep the spine and fist fossil, but I still wanted to include these prehistoric mons in my collection. Got a fast support mon and a tanky puncher. Now I want to thank my patrons for Patreon for directly supporting my content. Some of the higher tiers would also have access to behind the scenes sketches and other bonus content. But if you like these kind of videos, you can subscribe and share the video for free. I have a whole playlist of videos that include my stem based mods, so thank you all so much, and I'll see you next time.